हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज प्रणीत पाठक फोर्थ ईयर फिजिक्स मेजर स्टूडेंट एंड टॉपिक ऑफ माय प्रेजेंटेशन इज हाइड्रोडाइनमिक्स ऑफ सुपरफ्लूड हीलियम सेकंड दिस प्रेजेंटेशन इज बेसिकली डिवाइडेड इनटू टू हाफ्स इन फर्स्ट हाफ आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग इक्वेशन ऑफ हाइड्रोडाइनमिक्स ऑफ बोथ विस्कस एंड आइडियल फ्लूड्स एंड इन सेकेंड हाफ आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग द इक्वेशन फॉर सुपरफ्लूड हीलियम सेकेंड एंड इट्स एक्साइटिंग प्रॉपर्टीज Hydrodynamics is the macroscopic theory describing the motion of moving fluids. The basic assumption in this theory is that if we take any small amount of volume throughout the fluid, it contains very large number of molecules. The variables we need to know to completely determine the state of moving fluid are its pressure, fluid velocity and its density. Here we have to keep in mind that these variables are the function of space time. Ideal fluids or perfect fluids are the idealized models in which it is assumed that fluid is non-viscous that is no dissipation occur in the fluid also heat transfer among the molecules in the fluid is ignored in these models the continuity equation for ideal fluids is nothing but the statement of conservation of mass the integral version of the continuity equation shown in the slide it can be interpreted as take any closed surface in the fluid the rate of increase of mass inside that closed surface is equal to the flux of mass entering that surface the j vector is equal to rho v is the flux vector also using stokes theorem we can write the differential version of continuity equation del dot j equals del rho by del t The Euler's equation is the force equation or Newton's second law written for the moving ideal fluids. The first term on the right hand side is the force because of the gradient of pressure inside the fluid and second term is because of the gravity. Using calculus identities, Euler's equation can also be written as del V by del T plus V dot dot V is equals minus gradient P by rho plus G. one can write momentum conservation equation in terms of continuity equation as shown in the slide here pi i k on the right hand side is the momentum flux density tensor which is equal to p del i k plus rho v i v k here v i and v k are the velocities in ith and kth direction the equation can be interpreted as the ith component of fluid contained in the volume is equal to the ith component of momentum flowing out through the surface enclosing the volume here also using stokes theorem we can write its differential version as del del t of rho vi is equals divergence of the momentum flux density tensor with negative sign of course similarly one can write energy conservation equation in terms of continuity equation as shown in the slide here left hand side is the rate of change of kinetic energy plus internal energy of molecule inside any volume right hand side is the kinetic energy plus internal energy current plus the current of pressure work on the fluid flowing out of normal to the enclosing surface integrated over the volume per unit time but while writing these equations we have got six equations for five state variables in principle we can obtain euler's equation from momentum continuity equation therefore we have in total five independent equations for ideal fluids the boundary conditions for ideal fluids is that normal component of fluid velocity at the vicinity of boundary wall must vanish in the rest frame of boundary wall if boundary wall is moving in some frame the normal component of that fluid velocity must be equal to the velocity of boundary wall in viscous fluid models the non dissipation assumptions of ideal fluids are relaxed the viscous fluids also follow same mass continuity equation as followed by ideal fluids the momentum conservation equation is slightly changed in momentum flux density tensor 
one more term is added this sigma ek term which is called viscosity stress tensor and its expression is given in the slide one more interesting fact of viscosity stress tensor is that the term which are written in the square bracket vanishes when i and k are contracted and the coefficient of zeta which is del vl by del xl vanishes if we take an incompressible fluid here eta and zeta are the first and second coefficient of viscosities if we solve the momentum continuity equation previously obtained for an incompressible fluid that is for which del dot v equals 0 we can find the following equation which is also called the navier stokes equation similarly we can write energy conservation equation in terms of continuity equation for viscous fluids as shown in the slide here left hand side is same as that of ideal fluid in right hand side inside the divergence term first term is same as that of ideal fluid second term is because of the dissipations due to viscosity term and third term is because of the heat transfer in among the molecules of fluid here kappa is called thermal conductivity of fluid boundary conditions for viscous fluids can be stated as the velocity of fluid must vanish at the vicinity of boundary wall in the rest frame of boundary wall for viscous fluids there are two boundary conditions namely the normal component and the parallel component of the velocity at the surface must vanish this is because the navier stokes equations are second order differential equations while the euler equation we get was first order differential equation therefore in ideal fluids we have only one boundary condition now i will discuss the superfluidity of helium second most of the fluids when cooled at very very low temperature tends to solidify but this is not the case for helium second it remains in its fluid state even at very low temperatures there is a critical temperature called lambda point below which it shows very exciting properties among which superfluidity is one of them the lambda point is at 2.19 kelvin for helium second below lambda point the fluid helium second behaves as if it is a mixture of two non interacting fluids which are ideal and viscous the ideal component is called superfluid component while the viscous component is called normal component at lambda point second order phase transition takes place now i'll be discussing some experiments which shows the existence of superfluid component in the helium second fluid below its lambda point when helium second fluid is taken in a rotating cylinder the superfluid component will stay at rest since it's non viscous and the normal component will rotate along with the cylinder since its viscosity is finite we can take the ratio of observed moment of inertia and the expected moment of inertia the expected moment of inertia is calculated while assuming whole fluid is rotating it turns out that the ratio is not one and this ratio can also be used to determine what is the ratio of superfluid to normal component in the fluid also it is observed that when helium second superfluid is taken in a vessel the superfluid component because of its zero viscosity creeps out of the container this phenomenon is the consequence of its zero viscosity and it creeps out while forming very thin film so these are the hydrodynamical equations for helium second superfluid the density of fluid can be taken as the sum of superfluid component and normal component since superfluid component follows potential flow that is curl of superfluid velocity equal to 0 therefore superfluid velocity can be taken as a gradient of some scalar potential the normal component 
because it has some finite viscosity follows navier stokes equation as shown the superfluid boundary condition is same as that of ideal fluid that normal component of fluid velocity at the vicinity of boundary wall vanishes and the normal component of the superfluid follows no slip boundary conditions that is no the fluid velocity vanishes at the vicinity of boundary wall in the rest frame of boundary wall the application of hydrodynamical equations for helium second fluid leads to the propagation of sound and two velocity of, of sound are found in the helium second fluid below its lambda point which are u1 equals square root del p by del rho and u2 equals square root t s square rho s by c rho n here c is the specific heat capacity of fluid as temperature rises above lambda point u2 becomes zero since the density of superfluid becomes zero and we get only one velocity which is the usual velocity of sound in fluid as t tending to zero u1 tends to c and u2 tends to c by root 3 these are the references i have used in making the slides thank you for your attention